Well, I'm getting close to the point where I'm uh, thinking of putting the, uh, the Atlas lathe here on the market. And uh, one of the other things I want to take care of on here that's uh, always bothered me since I owned it is um, this, uh, this problem with the crossfeed. The uh, crossfeed handle broke, and I'll show you that in a minute. And in an attempt to uh, fix it, um, the previous owner fabricated this this uh, this this fix, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, what this is is this is actually a hand crank handle for a window on an old car. I'm not quite sure what. Somebody might even be able to tell. Somebody really astute with automotive. Uh, classic autos might even be able to tell who makes that uh, or what that fits. What do you think of that? that a cream puff for eBay right there or what? <laughs> so there's uh, issues with this repair. First and foremost, uh, this is just fairly cumbersome. And if you back out far enough and you have the combination of this backed out far enough, they will interfere with each other. Daddy, supper time. Okay. So at some point this hand wheel had broken and he had uh, made a uh, hand wheel. And it's actually not bad. It doesn't run. It runs way out of whack for some reason. Um, and maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll take a look at that. But um, the question would be, well, why didn't he just make a hand wheel for this? And... The reason he didn't is because this hand wheel is cast and it's actually part of the dial for the cross feed. It's all one piece, which is kind of uh, a nasty ordeal. And so unlike, say, like the hand wheel that's on the tail stock, which is probably identical to the hand wheel that was on the uh, carriage originally. Those hand wheels, where you can actually find them occasionally pop up on eBay, um, this is very unique and it was short-lived. So what he did was he basically left the broken hand wheel in place and then attached this metal disc and then this handle. and. Even to make this work, he had to get kind of creative here. Notice he's got a, a full-size bolt here with a nut on the back. Over here, he just went with a uh, small cap screw because he needed to clear this edge here. And to make matters worse, I uh, even put it in at an angle. So, i get this all unscrewed. kind of a funky ordeal to say the least. I guess I'll deal with that after supper. Daddy, or maybe tomorrow. Well, it looks like maybe this this handle does come off of this shaft. I always thought this was all uh, that the lead screw in this was one piece only because the the one that's available on eBay he's selling it with the handle and the lead screw and even the uh, the nut and he wants seventy dollars for that which if you want to be 100 percent you know authentic I guess in your restoration and given the rarity of this particular style I guess that's a fair price I just uh, I just don't want to pay that I don't want to put more money into this thing than I have to so, uh, what is unique and problematic is the fact that this part right here, which has all of your graduations on it for how many thousands you're turning this, is integral to the part, to the uh, hand wheel, which is what's unique. Instead of having this be a separate piece, so that's why the previous owner came up with a way so that he could uh, keep the integrity of, of this without uh, hmm, 
just looking at this now and wondering how I'm going to do this. I think the starters, what I probably want to do is maybe if I can clean this up in the lathe so I've got a flat edge here that I could mount a disc similar to what he did here. That's what I'm thinking anyways. Well, let me give this some more thought. All right, so I've been giving this some thought and uh, I decided that uh, the, the, the design here wasn't entirely bad. It just could have been executed a little bit better maybe. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, recreate this, only I'm going to use something with a slightly larger OD. And then what I want to do is I'm going to mill a slot or a groove in the back of this that's going to allow this to sit down inside of it. Uh, obviously not completely, but a little bit further. And this hole is going to have to be enlarged if I use this piece. This hole is going to have to be enlarged to... Uh, to this size to accommodate the two nuts that actually hold this piece on. So this will be, again, this will be put back on, the nuts will be tightened. This new, this new newly made piece is going to slide over this. And then from the back, I figure I'll just, uh, I'll just have a couple of, uh, I'll figure out a way to, to put some, maybe some standoffs in here and some clamps. Sort of like the way the hold downs work on a on a table, on the mill table. Something along that line there should work perfectly fine. And then for the handle, I just gotta uh, drill a hole and mount the handle. And if uh, if this wheel wasn't broken, it would actually be in the way. But since it is broken, we've got this whole section here missing. It's a perfect place for me to 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 uh, drill for the handle. Of course, if this wasn't broken, then we wouldn't be having this discussion at all. I'd be just, I'd be just using this. All right. So I got kind of like a basic diagram here, and I'm going to get some dimensions to get me an idea of where I need to be. Like for starters, um, I want. I'm probably going to take this OD down a little bit because it's a little big. Give you an idea how much bigger it is than the piece I've already got. But this piece is pretty much just slightly larger than the OD of this this whole handle. But I want to have this actually sit over this and partially cover this. And the reason I want to do that is just to give it a little bit better look. Hide a little bit more of this brokenness. I mean, I could even get a piece thicker than this and could literally have this uh, groove deep enough so that this thing just covered this whole thing. I might have to uh, mill some slots. You know, I'm, maybe I'll do that. This might be stainless. If it is, I don't really want to use it just because it's a pain to machine it. All right, I went through my pile of stuff and uh, found this piece right here, which I like better than this piece because it's... OD is not as large, so I don't have to turn anything off the outside of this one. It's almost perfect for this. Okay, it'll give me just a little bit of meat left to kind of act like a little shield to cover this outside edge right here. And furthermore, it's a little bit thicker than this piece, so I'll be able to make this groove that this is going to sit down into. I'll make that groove a little bit deeper. All right. So I'm liking that. So I'm thinking ahead here, trying to think ahead about how I want to do this, what operations I want to do. For instance, I know that like this has got a sharp edge on it that I don't like, so I'm going to want to knock that sharp edge off. But for right now, I'm going to save that operation for near the end because I like this nice, crisp, sharp edge right now for if I want to uh, uh, use an edge finder on that. There's 
looks like this might have already been turned at some point. So there's almost like a little bullseye right in the middle there. And I don't necessarily want to rely on that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, scribe a couple of lines to find the center here. You know, the other thing was, well, how do I want to go about this? Uh, you know, because it's such a thin piece. I could put it in the chuck of the lathe, certainly, to drill the hole that I need to drill in the center. But the Vernon lathe is the only lathe I would use at this point for something like this because I can't fit this in the little atlas lathe uh, chuck. And the honest answer is I still haven't gotten around to setting up the Vernon completely. I haven't uh, leveled the lathe and I have so there might be some twist in the bed that might cause a problem. And also uh, I haven't verified whether or not the tailstock is in alignment. You know it could have been it could be offset a little bit and I wouldn't even know it. So rather than I want to get to this so rather than mess with doing that to get that I'll do that some other time. So I'm going to do this in the mill. So my plan is going to be um, going to use a rotary table on the mill, but for the time being, I'm going to put this in the. I'm going to find the center. I'm going to put this in the vise. I'm going to drill my hole in the center here, uh, which needs to be this diameter right here. Okay. And then I'm going to rig some up, some way up to hold this on the rotary table, which you'd think well you know there's t-slots on the rotary table should be easy enough to clamp this to the table the problem is I've got such a small edge that's left so in other words you can see when this is on here you can imagine that when I go to cut this groove the cutter is going to be you know the edge of the cutter is going to be right here I've got barely anything to clamp onto so that doesn't really work but I was thinking maybe what I could do is uh, turn a little short stub piece in the lathe that fits in that center hole on the uh, rotary table and then also you know turn turn one kind of have a step to it and have the wider part fit right in that center of the rotary table and have the smaller part fit right in the center of the hole I'm going to make in this and then uh, maybe just figure out a way to, to maybe put a hole through and a piece of all thread or something I figure there's got to be a way to clamp that down alternatively I could I've got a super spacer so I could put this in the chuck of the super spacer okay and use the chuck on the super spacer to hold it well I think the ideal method probably would be if I had a chuck for my rotary table that sat right on top of the rotary table, but I do not have that. Um, and the problem with the super spacer is the super spacer, I, if I recall, it doesn't really have the ability to crank it. Uh, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to just turn that handle on that rotary table and have the cutter go right around and cut that out. All right, so I just took a Sharpie and colored this a little bit, poor man's marking fluid. And uh, I'm just going to use this centering tool and scribe three lines. And if this stock that I'm playing with here is perfectly round, all three of those lines will intersect perfectly. If they do not intersect perfectly, then that just means that this wasn't perfectly round and then I'm going to want to aim for the little tiny triangle that's formed by that into, uh, by those three lines crossing each other in the center which I'm going to look at on magnification well I didn't like that method of using that center finder because when I scratched the three lines they were intersecting pretty far off from where that dimple is that is on here and it made me think well is this out of round but it's not I just checked this is like half a thousandth under 
three inches and then if I turn it I'm sorry, a thousandth and a half under three inches and if I turn it this way it's a thousandth under so I'm getting pretty consistent measurement of uh, within a half a thousandth no matter which way I go around which tells me this thing is perfectly round but then I was looking at that center finder I was using and realized that could easily be the cause of the error uh, I don't know if any of those actually is on the proper blade that it's supposed to be on so I think that's more of a uh, down and dirty quick and dirty way of, of, uh, of finding the center so yeah I know this isn't a real surface plate still haven't decided what the hell this is and you know no I'm not going to uh, use gauge blocks to set this Probably kind of silly for me to even be wiping this down considering it's not a real surface plate, but there is crap on there. I could feel the grit. I don't have a case for this. This is a $20 flea market find a while back, so it's uh so it's unfortunate because it's a it's a brown and sharp. Ideally this should be in a case with all of its little attachments. So I'm gonna so I don't get all confused with all those other marks on the other side there. Um, so I set it to three inches just for the hell of it. And yeah, it goes underneath, which makes sense because I said this was about a thousand thunder. So I'm going to set this to an inch and a half. Technically, I should be setting it to uh, half a thou over. No, I'm sorry, half a thou under. Just curious where that sits. That's a lot closer to that little center dimple there than what I had before. Hmm. That's what I'm going with. Alright, I just used my automatic center punch to make a small mark. And uh, now I'm going to make a deeper mark. Well, the point on that needs to be on the ground. Looks good. So what I want to do is I want to bring this up by eye as close as I can get it. And then start running the table back and forth. I'm not touching off yet. Alright, I'm touching off right there. So I'm going to walk the Y axis, come off the uh, edge of the part, reset my center finder here. Bring the table over to where I just find the edge. Right there. Set my dial to zero. And I'm going to go over 100. No, an inch and a half. So, go around five times. That's an inch. Half an inch is five hundred thousandths. One revolution is two hundred. Or two and a half revolutions. One, two, and a half. Lock the table right there. Lower the knee. One more.
Mine's pretty good. That seems fine. Well, after lunch, I'll come back and uh, drill it out.